Hello, everyone. My name is Ashley Hanna. I'm a two-time Udall Scholar, and in this interview, we'll be talking about the Udall Scholarship. And I'm a Criminal Justice and American Indian Studies major. I'm Hunk Papa Lakota from Standing Rock Sioux Nation, and I am very happy to be here with Erin Morin. She will be doing my interview today, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, guys. I'm Erin Morin. I am from the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa, and I am hopefully the next Udall Scholarship winner. And I'm just having a great time. And I got in a year early to start applying because I really wanted to get ahead of this competitive scholarship. And so far, I just have some questions and I hope these questions help you guys as well. And so let's get started. So first, what is the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship? Yes, so the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship is through the Udall Foundation. And I'm gonna share my screen with you guys so you can see the website. And awesome. they offer a lot of services. They do an internship in Washington, DC. And they also do a couple, I think a graduate scholarship maybe. It's all on their website, but for what we're talking about is the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship. This is the Udall Foundation, which awards scholarships to college sophomores and juniors for their leadership, public service, and com commitment to issues related to Native American nations or the environment. And we'll get into more detail, but usually it's about 55 scholars who get awarded up to seven grand. And the due date for this scholarship for 2021 will be in March. I know Aaron's a little um, ambitious and is early, but usually this is around the good time to start writing your application. But the most important thing about the Udall scholarship is that the Udall is the last name of two congressmen and they've made a huge impact in the United States and in native or Indian country as most would say. So it's the legacies of Morris Udall and Stuart Udall um, whose careers had a significant impact in Native American self-governments, healthcare, and the stewardship of public lands and natural resources. And this is their page, it's just udall.gov. It's a governmental um, foundation. And then these are the three things. I'm gonna point this out now so you guys remember when you apply, civility, integrity, and consensus. Big tip, use those in some of your application. Oh, thank you. Um, I know as a Native American, I'm allowed to apply, but I'm just wondering like who can all apply for the scholarship? Is it just limited to Native Americans? No, nope, it's not. So for the environmental section, when you apply as an environmentalist, you can apply as a non-native for undergraduates in interested in conversation and environmental issues. Did my screen cha change for you? Did the thing change? Yeah, I could still, okay. I could, yeah, it changed for me. Okay, good. Um, it gets a little bit tricky with the tribal policy and the native health care. They prefer you to be enrolled, but that does not determine your, like, it doesn't stop you from applying for it. So if you're not enrolled to a tribal nation, it asks for some proof of like family history or your ancestry to like prove that, or a letter from the nation um, proving your dedication to supporting their community. Just some kind of proof to um, show that you are of native history and um, it says that in the application, but I would not let that ever make you feel like you are not worthy of the application. And the people who do the reading of the applications will absolutely take in consideration. It's just a very small, it's like 1% of your determination of the scholarship. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's interesting. Um, there's a lot to go around for the scholarship. It's pretty interesting to see that it's just helping community as a whole, instead of not just being for Native Americans, kind of opening and abroading it. And so to apply for this application, what all do we need to complete? Okay, so what do we need to complete? I'm gonna go, I think it's the next one. Did the tab change for you? Yeah. Okay, so a lot of the questions, just to remind everyone, that that I'll be answering also come in this handy dandy like go to and it's just the FAQs on the side. But for the scholarship itself, the Udall scholarship, 
um, application. So the most important thing to recognize, especially if you're not at the University of North Dakota, if someone else sees this, is that you have a UDAL faculty rep. So our rep at UND is Yi Han Chu. She helps with all the national scholarships and um, student achievement. And she is our faculty rep. She started in when I did my first um, time applying to the UDAL scholar. And it consists of 11 question application and an 800 word essay on a speech, legislative act, book or public policy statement by either Morris or Stewart. And then you also have to do your transcripts for college. And then you also have to have three letters of recommendation. And this is important to pick people at your college that who know you have seen the work you've done and can to like confirm that who you say in your application is who you are sitting in front of them. And then on this page, you can also use a sample application C1 and I'll stop sharing and reshare that document with you guys to kind of show the lengthy, like how lengthy this is and why it's important to get started as soon as you can. So here's the sample. So it starts with your basics. And I would always recommend going through the application and filling out as much as you can and doing bullet points the first time around so you can start thinking about what they ask. And going back to your question, Erin, do you have to be tribal enrolled? If you're applying to the healthcare or tribal policy one, it says you can click a member of an Indian tribe and then provide the tribe or you can say you're a descendant of a tribal member and then put the relationship in tribe. But if you don't have those two, then you can do the deemed by secretary of inter or a member of First Nations in Canada. So even Canadian or Alaska natives can also apply. And then if you ever have like further complications, um, they had some more advice on their page when I said contacting the tribal person of your community attesting to who you are. Um, and then there's about 10 questions. Some of them are limited to characters. Some of them are putting in like bulletin points of the activities you've done. Some of them are continuous, um, even more specific when you participated in the office you held. And then even ask about your high school activity. And then more internships, more paragraphs, and then there's an essay portion which you attach at the end of it or together. But when you you never upload anything of the application, this is why Yihan, your faculty rep, comes in hand. She like enrolls you to the scholarship. She goes on her website and her like profile. She adds you as an applicant, and then she uploads all files. She reads your stuff and she doesn't. She won't upload it until she knows it's nice and crisp and you're well put together as a scholar. Oh, okay. That's that's why it's so great to help have like rep, a rep to help you out. So she, okay, that makes a lot of sense because when I, oh, it's different from other scholarships. Other scholarships, you do it yourself. You don't have a rep. You can ask people. But this one, that makes sense as to why it's so competitive. You have somebody to help you. They want to help you succeed. That's That makes a lot of sense. Awesome. That did help a lot. And seeing that sample, I'm going to use that a lot. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> the yeah. whole year. And so, um, so for the what's next, like if you got accepted, there's like a UDAL scholar orientation. So like what takes place at that orientation? Yeah, so when I did it, the first year that I applied was pre-COVID, right? COVID was even, not even in question. And it happens at the end of summer, like at the beginning of August, all 55 scholars get flown out, you get a travel scholarship, and you go to Tucson, Arizona and stay at a resort. This orientation is not optional. If you're gonna to apply to this scholarship, you have to reserve the dates that they give on the website ahead of time, and you have to apply, otherwise you don't get the scholarship. And the second time I applied for the, um, the scholarship, it was during COVID. So all 55 scholars did the orientation, but we did it through Zoom. So I did it in the comfort of my home, but it was day long, the screen time, but it went really well. So during the scholarship orientation, it's usually four days of networking, critical thinking, and community building with your scholar class. Mm -hmm. Scholars ta um, tackle a challenge stu case study. 
we did the case study the first year, but they got feedback and they changed it the second year. It did more networking and more like presentations on tribal communities and things that we face in tribal um, Indian country. So it's, it says still that it's a case study. They may bring it back and revamp it and redo it appropriate way. But now it's more of a network with alumni and guest speakers from a variety of tribal policy and environmental fields. Learn what it means to be a part of the Udall legacy and the leave orientation feelings inspired and supported. So like I said, you get a travel scholarship. You don't have to pay for it. You get to stay in a really nice resort. Not going to lie. It was like three pools and a basketball court. And you're um, housed with like three other scholars and you, um, you're brought together and you meet every morning, have um, lunch with each other. And then there's also these things called pre-orientation workshops. So they'll fly you out a day early if you're interested in one of their um, workshops um, as an early like pre-orientation stuff. And there's a native nation building and there's an introduction to community-based research for tribal and environmental health. I did the Native Nation building and I really enjoyed it. And I even get a certification at the end, but the catch is, is that you have to do like homework over the summer. It's like a class, like a workshop class and you get a certificate, but you have to do reading over the summer. And it wasn't any like timely matter stuff. You only had one due date right before getting there, but it was, um, it's good reading. So it wasn't as torturous as school may be. Um, and then also I mentioned the travel skip travel scholarship and then if it's not in person we did it on zoom you get put into groups in zoom to work like hang out we still did a talent show like we did in person we did it on zoom and that was really funny and then um a lot of just like networking and building. We met um, Deb Holland this past Zoom this past year. She came on and talked about missing and murdered indigenous women. And there was just a bunch of presentations and actually getting to know what Native American communities face. So like I said, there's non-natives there, but they're working for the environmental side, but it's important for them to learn about what's going on in native communities because a lot of environmental activists are Native Americans. So it's a really good um, trans like transfer from America non-native to American Native American issues. Oh yeah, that definitely. Honestly, that is super ex like exciting to hear you talk about going on to orientation and doing all this fun stuff and also learning while you're having fun so they're kind yeah. of they're like you're coming you're required to come and have fun with us <laughs> yeah <laughs> and learn yeah. and yeah it just sounds wonderful and like and so if I if I applied but I maybe didn't get accepted or I did what are the benefits of applying yeah, so there's a benefit of applying. You, If you don't get the scholarship itself as a scholar, you get what's called an honorable mention. And you still get to be a part of the Udall community. You get put on the lift serve and um, you're still, you've applied, you've almost made it, but you didn't get the money portion of it. And so it's still important to get to that at least mentioned on, especially on your resume, because it shows that they considered you, they recognized you and they know your ambitions, but there's just mm -hmm. so many other people who also applied. So other than the money and the orientation, um, it's the honorable mention that we've had many scholars get that and it's important to recognize. Awesome. Well, it's great to hear that just because you didn't get the money doesn't mean you're not still a part of the group, you know, a part of the, the change. And honestly, yeah, it's super competitive. I see all these, um, I would go on the website a lot, Udall website, and I just see how competitive it is last year's winners. And it's just, it's a lot, but it, it looks fun. Competitive yeah. is fun. <laughs> so, is. Um, yeah, and 